This year's budget session commenced today on February 1st, 2024, marking the final sitting before the crucial 2024 general elections. All eyes were set on Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman as she presented the interim budget, offering glimpses into the government's economic agenda for the coming fiscal year. Let's look into some of the major takeaways of the 2024 interim budget session. Looks like 2024 will be a year of light, in case you're wondering why. Because rooftop solarization and free electricity is the first lighting from the interim today. So, the Indian government has announced an exciting initiative called the Rooftop Solarization and Free Electricity. The Pradhan Mantri is Surya Darya Yojana. This means the government aims to install rooftop solar panels on one crore households across India. These panels will generate electricity for the households, potentially reducing the reliance on the grid and lowering the electricity bills. As an incentive, the government will provide up to 300 units of free electricity per month to these households for a certain period. With expected benefits like saving up to Rs 15,000 and Rs 18,000, an opportunity to sell surplus electricity to discoms like companies. Overall, the rooftop solarization and free electricity initiative has the potential to significantly benefit millions of households in India by reducing their electricity bills, promoting clean energy and offering additional income opportunities. Now let's talk about the other very interesting key point, housing for middle classes. So the government plans to launch a scheme to assist deserving sections of the middle class living in rented houses, slums, chawls or unauthorized colonies to buy or build their own houses. This one looks quite challenging because according to 2020 statistical updates, 49% of India's population resides in the slum. The next big announcement from the budget session is the expansion of medical colleges. The government plans to establish more medical colleges by utilizing existing hospital infrastructure. With a committee to be set up for examination and recommendation currently, India is home to 751 medical colleges of which 141 are private medical colleges, 89 are government owned and rest 8 are semi-government owned. As India faces a significant shortage of doctors, increasing medical college capacity could help address this issue. Minister, Union Minister Sitaraman also announced the interim on vaccination for girls during the session. This is a major highlight as this can be a positive initiative and as cervical cancer contributes to approximately 6 to 29 of all cancers in women. In the country and especially for the state of Mizoram, because, unfortunately, Mizoram holds the highest rate with 23 and 700 per thousand. Although, the age-adjusted incident rate of cervical cancer varies widely among registries. Another key highlight is the comprehensive maternal and child health care program. Under this various scheme, on maternal and child health care are expected to be combined into one comprehensive program for improved synergy in implementation. So far, in the past, India has launched several programs focused on maternal and child care, such as the Mission for the Inclusion of Vulnerable Tribal Groups, MIVTG, the Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana, PMMVY, and Rashtriya Bal Swasthya Karyakram, RBSK. So all these will probably be merged under one definite scheme or program. Besides this, the other interim announcements were expansion of Nano DAP application, which is a nano DAP application on various crops, will be expanded across uh, agroclimatic zones. Next is the char charging of electric vehicles. And then the promotion of post-harvest activities. Then there is the extension of Ayushman Bharat coverage and agriculture and food processing, which means intensified efforts in value addition to boost farmers' income with a focus reducing post-harvest losses and improving productivity and income. And then we have the Atma Nirbhar Oil Seeds Abhiyan, then the Dairy Development Pro Program, also the Matsya Sampada. Next is promoting investments. Another one of the societal changes, revised estimates for 2023 to 2024, and the tax proposals. Sitaraman proposed not to make any changes relating to taxation and retain the same tax rates for direct and indirect taxes, including import duties. Last but not the least, another important announcement is the fiscal deficit which is lower than what people were expecting. 
5.8 was the percentage of the country's total economic output, the GDP. The actual deficit was lower than what economists and other experts had predicted. Fiscal deficit target in 2024 to 2025 is 5.1%, which is goal the government has set for the deficit. Overall, there are no SOPs or big rural transfers. There is also no changes to direct or indirect tax rates. No change in structure as well. As we know, interim budget, also known as a vote on account, is a temporary financial plan presented by the government in election and election year in India. Overall, the interim budget serves as a stopgap arrangement, bridging the financial needs of the government until the new administrative establishes its long-term economic agenda.